Look at this. They're having a great time. It's a party. Come on. We can burn our fire where we want. It's a very powerful symbol of their sovereignty. And it kind of sparks joy in me, to be honest, though it inconvenienced everybody on the highway for many hours, and I know that's a big bother. But these people are standing up for their sovereignty. And that, uh, you know what? That, that warms the cockles of my heart, I must say. This is Only Real Cloud. I make daily videos about news, politics, cultures, and occasionally a dank meme or two. Please consider subscribing if you like the content. Leave a like or a comment. I'll probably reply. Hit that notification bell and the all button if you want to get it. This is just the beginning. You woke all these warriors up. Uh, these people have had enough. Their uh, the authorities and the governments, their trampling on our rights and, and they, our rights are the law of the land and, um, and they think they're going to bypass it with uh, an elected system and, uh, and that's not going to fly, not going to fly here. They're going to bypass the elected system. Wait, I think he got his news wrong. In the Wet'suwet'en, they're bypassing the elected system. The hereditary chiefs are bypassing the elected chiefs, right? So who's bypassing who here? In this case, the government and the company and the RCMP are all respecting the elected chiefs of the Wet'suwet'en. But up here on this different clan, this guy's saying, hey, don't, you know, he's probably an elected chief. Maybe that's why. He's a hereditary chief. I'm not sure what he's talking about. That's why you see all these people here now, because uh, they've had enough. They're, uh, and I think this is the only the beginning. Troops move to the rear and the RCMP retreat. Oh, a victory for the indigenous people. At this point, the police start walking in. Just a couple of them. They're escalating quickly. He's just trying to walk around him. No, I'm not trying to deal with you. I'm trying to talk to somebody else. No. Wow, this warrior, he's uh, he's right in there. And then, oh, what happened? Somebody tripped over somebody. Oh, it's grandma. Look at that. Grandma's yelling, hey, cut it out. I think she starts yelling at the, at the kid. Hey, you, don't, this is, remember, these are the real police. <laughs> Just because we're on camera now, boy. Watch out, you can get your ass thrown in jail. We can do what we want on our territory. You cannot start a fire on the highway. We can do what we want on our territory. Our chief is in jail because of you. Return to your people. Okay, you cannot start a fire Return. on the highway. Why not? Officer, it's illegal to have a fire on the highway. It's illegal to remove our chief from our territory. <laughs> it's illegal to remove our chief from our territory. Oh man, what a great victory. He's like, oh brother, I'm out of here, the police says. What do we have? We have how many chiefs that are not, that have been apprehended by the police officers? That's insanity. This is their territory. Well, it's not insanity. It's not insane, is it? Pretty sure that the CN are like, nope, this is our land. <laughs> we cut a little swath. We've got an easement from the federal government or something to that effect. They were blocking the train tracks, hmm. and the police arrested them. What a big surprise. And that's the number one thing. This is the very issue that we're dealing with in, in Wet'suwet'en territory right now. The very same thing, the hereditary chiefs. The hereditary chiefs. There's just an interesting thing coming out about, about one of the hereditary chiefs, Chief Wu's. But it's from a, the, the name Chief Wu's is from a matrilineal line. And yet the Chief Wu's, who's the main spokesman, meeting with Trudeau's minister uh, over the weekend to try to negotiate some sort of deal, well, he took that title from women, from a matriarch, who got stripped of the title. Why? Because she supported the gas line. And how would you feel about that, Wing Chief? 
hereditary chief, if you were a hereditary chief, which is a title for life, and you were stripped because you supported something that somebody else didn't like, and, and it was a man who then took on your title, that's the hereditary chief who's going against the majority of other hereditary chiefs, as well as the plurality, all of the bands in Wet'suwet'en, the elected chiefs and councils, voted for the pipeline. Very different situation here. It seems like they have quite a lot of unity. But they're actually just exercising their, their undefined and vague, though constitutional rights, their claim to the land. So that's quite a different thing. And, you know, arguably, that's what the Wet'suwet'en are doing. But I think really what's happening in Wet'suwet'en is that the anti-pipeline activists know about this legal gray area, this chink in the armor, this weakness of the government, and they're exploiting it and using the Wet'suwet'en people to see division in the country and get their way and shut Canada down. It's exactly what these anti-pipeline protesters want. Though the indigenous people actually have a legitimate claim here. Look at this, they're having a great time. It's a party, come on. We can burn our fire where we want. It's a very powerful symbol of their sovereignty. And it kind of sparks joy in me, to be honest, though it inconvenienced everybody on the highway for many hours, and I know that's a big bother. But these people are standing up for their sovereignty. And that, uh, you know what? That, that warms the cockles of me heart, I must say. Our land! We can burn our fire where we want! The young man, the young brave, stands up to speak. They still got way less people than we do. And they don't have enough jails in the whole northern BC to jail all of us. And there's a really simple solution to this is that they let our chiefs free. This young man, very clever, one demand. They're not fighting about climate change. They're not fighting about their, you know, the, the difficult and complex legal issues that, that plague BC and the First Nations in BC. It's not about that. Really, they have one demand. And if they can negotiate that, then they'll all leave the highway, won't they? And what is that demand? Free our chiefs. So I think that's pretty reasonable. Free our chief! 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 Uh, he's got the hot dogs out. Man, he's having a good time. That <laughs> makes me happy. Whatever. A lot of these people live in a lot, a lot severe poverty. A lot of Native people in Canada live in big poverty. That's the only thing. That's where the, most of the poverty is here. This thing called the fourth world in uh, international development circles, which is people who live in third world conditions inside of a first world developed country like Canada. And the, where you will find the fourth world in Canada, only one place. That's in the, in the far northern regions and largely amongst First Nations people. Though not exclusively, also white people, but First Nations people are, are disproportionately more affected by poverty and poor conditions, and a lot of it has because they don't have property rights on their reserves. And so they have no way to amass wealth and pass that wealth down generationally unless they leave the reserve, and that fractures families and communities. It's a very difficult situation. And I think it can be resolved with uh, enough political will. Okay, imagine if we had imprisoned Justin Trudeau and the Queen. That's basically what happened. He's got a pretty good idea there. Maybe we should imprison Justin Trudeau. I mean, I think uh, he's committed some crimes. What, in the SNC Lavalin? So, get them once they're on the phone and talking to us, or we see them. We don't. We we can resolve this very peacefully. Here we are, the happy reunion. The chiefs are released and return back to their tribe, and our story has a happy ending. The villains, the villains are defeated. The villains are defeated. Well, I hope this increases the resolve of our people. That it's our future. 
our title to this land that's at risk. For them to come and arrest me on my territory. I mean, you were blocking the highway, man. That's why they came and arrested you. I mean, you were blocking the train tracks. They got an injunction, whatever. You knew what was going to happen. However, he did make a really good point before. He didn't mention anything about pipelines or climate change. He mentioned about the future of his people and the title to their land, their property rights. And I think a lot of conservatives should, you know, they should uh, be able to appreciate why they have a concern about their property rights. Because their property rights uh, are under threat. Or they are, are not well defined. They don't actually have individual property rights in terms of being able to own plots of land and build houses on their reserve land. That's all owned by the government. And so they're concerned. How do we secure our land property rights? We can own things, we can buy things, but you can't buy land on the reserve. So how, how can they reconcile with that? And that really is something that they need to resolve, that we need to resolve as a nation, as a country, Canada, with the First Nations people here. That's, a, that's an issue we do need to resolve. And hopefully soon, when, when a reasonable party like the PPC gets elected to power and we can actually do things that matter. My family's territory, my Wilp's territory, to come and arrest us for trespass is wrong. That's an issue that has to be corrected. They cannot have that option. I think it is an issue that needs to be corrected, but we do need to have that option. We, or we need to change where the trails, rails go. Maybe we can divert the highway and you, and you won't have a highway. How about that? You'll have to build your own road to the highway. Under you, because it's your nation, is it not? No. We're going to need the highway. You want to keep the highway. It's useful most of the time. Well, in that case, you can't just be able to block the highway or block the train tracks, can you? But I think he's right that it is an issue that needs to be resolved. I don't think it needs to be resolved by more blockades. Certainly not. That's not going to help anything. I think it needs to be resolved by resolving property rights for First Nations people. Abolish the Indian Act. 